This is a story time of why I dropped out of high school on my first day. And when I say my first day, I mean my first day of freshman year. After this, I never went back. So like I said, it was the first day of freshman year and I have extreme anxiety. My anxiety is literally so, so bad. I literally get anxiety just by waking up in the morning. So I was super anxious for my first day of high school. I literally was running around the school. I could not find my classes. I walked into the wrong classroom several times. It was so embarrassing. But then I finally made it to my first class. I sat down in the front of the classroom. Bad idea. After running around the school and not being able to find my classes and walking into different classes that I wasn't supposed to be in, which was so embarrassing, my stomach was literally in my ass. My stomach was literally bubbling because of my anxiety. I felt so much pressure in my stomach I needed to let some out. And you know I thought I could get away with it, you know, a little silent fart. You know it was silent, but it was not a fart. I shit my pants. Then the teacher says we're gonna go around the classroom and everyone has to stand up and say one thing about ourselves. Starting with me since I was sitting at the front. Now this is what happened like for part two. This is part two of why I dropped out of high school my first day of freshman year. So like I said, I just shit myself in class. And the teacher says we have to go around the room and everyone has to stand up and say something about themselves. And of course, I had to be sitting in the front of the classroom and I had to go first. So I just told her I didn't feel comfortable standing up and I'd rather sit down. But she said that I had to stand up and everybody has to stand up. So I clearly did not have many options and I decided that I was going to stand up. And so I stood up and everybody gasped, even the teacher. The teacher literally made everybody get out of the classroom. And I knew from there on out, I could not show my face in that school anymore. I knew all day everyone was going to talk about that one kid that shit themselves in class. Yeah, the teacher took everyone out of the class and then I got myself cleaned up. Went to the office, told them what happened. They called my mom. They let me go home. I cried to my mom and told her I could not show my face at that school anymore. And so she pulled me out of high school and I just did online until I graduated. Story time on how my sister married our stepdad after our mom passed away. Okay, so boom. My sister and I are like best friends since we're only one year apart. We have the same mom and dad, but my mom divorced our dad after catching him cheating on her. About five years later, my mom met our stepdad and got married and we've been a happy family ever since. So me and my sister started off very close, but our relationship became strained when I noticed my sister and stepdad being way too close. I never caught them doing anything, but their relationship was inappropriate. But it always happened behind me and my mom's back. I only seen them sneak off a couple times when they didn't expect me to come out my room while my mom was at work. But it was only very long hugs and kisses on the cheeks that I seen. Unfortunately, my mom got sick and- Story time, would you call this cheating? So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school, and I was dating this guy who we're gonna call Tom, right? When we started dating, everything was super good. But a little bit into our relationship, I started to get the ick. Anything and everything he would do would literally irritate the hell out of me. So at that point, I told him that we should take a break. So we did. Well, while we were on this little break, I decided to go out with my cousin the one night. And she had brought this guy who she was talking to at the time. We're going to call him Jake. Jake and I had the same classes in school, but we never really talked to each other. Well, I started to get to know him throughout the night, and I realized we had a lot in common. I felt like he was flirting with me, so I decided to flirt with him. When we got home, I had told her how much I really liked Jake. We ended up FaceTiming and falling asleep on the phone together. We all hung out again the next day, and I invited him back to my house. Like for part two. Time when I was nine, I was giving my mom a back massage. I was sitting on her back and I wanted to fart, but instead I did a shard and piss combo so wet and stinky your nose would turn into dust if you smelled it. She immediately jumped up and my hot diarrhea splattered all over our brand new carpets. She went and showered and I could hear her crying. When she got out, she made me clean the shit on the carpet with my blanket. She made me sleep with the blanket that night and I was crying in bed. The smell of my blanket was that bad I vomited and because the pressure of my vomit was so harsh I did another shit and piss combo. I was crying as I rolled around in my filth and my mom came in and screamed when she saw it. She said how can someone so little have so much shit inside of them. She showered me and she then made me sleep on the couch because she didn't want to risk me sharding in her bed. We then bought a new bed set for me and replaced our carpets. I got scammed out of a cup and 12 hours of work. For those of you who don't know, I have a crystal and rhinestone customization business. I also have multiple chronic illnesses, so my time is very valuable to me. I try to go on TikTok Live a few times a week so customers can see how their order is being made. Somebody ordered a Starbucks tumbler while I was on live. I was very excited. I started working on it once I saw that it said paid. I later found out after it had been delivered that all the information that she had put in was completely fake. Her name, her phone number, her email address, 
My husband helped me find out her real information and we saw that the actual address that she had it delivered to was only nine minutes away. So she probably sent it to a friend's house. Unfortunately, there's nothing my bank or the payment plan company can do. So I kind of just have to eat it. And she had the audacity to place two more orders. And I emailed her and I said, hey, uh, what would you like to do about payment for your first order and your other two orders? And I got no response. I don't understand why people do stuff like this. Here is a story of the worst encounter I've probably had with a client when I first began my business. So I turned up at the house clean at 8.30 in the morning as that was the agreed time that we had discussed when we were messaging each other. Now, when I got there, she told me that I would have to wait until she got back from school drop-off until she could let me in, which she then proceeded to tell me that the school was about 20 minutes away, so all up, I'd be waiting 40 minutes for her to get back from school drop-off to let me in. Also, I should mention this was my first time coming to this home too. So once I was in the house, I started cleaning and she got back about an hour later. The clean was fine and everything went well. And as I was finishing up by vacuuming on the floor, she came up to me and asked if I could also clean the glass staircase. Now this wasn't included in my inclusions lease and it's offered as an extra service. So I told her that I would just do it for $30 extra as it probably take me probably half an hour to 40 minutes to complete it as it was quite large and wrapped around. She then tried to negotiate with me and told me that she would only do it for $15, which was half of the price of what I had offered. And if I didn't give it to her $15, she wouldn't get it done. I told her that I'm not really fussed if I don't do it, as it would probably push me back and make me late to my second house anyway. She then went on to beg me for about 10 minutes to do it for $15. And I kept saying, no, it's going to be $30 no matter what. She ended up just finally listening to me and agreeing to go ahead with the $30 extra for the glass. Once I'd finished, I asked if she wanted to pay via bank transfer or cash, and she told me to send me my bank details to her. I told her the amount, and then she tried to negotiate with me the price again without adding the glass in. After some back and forth conversations, she finally agreed to pay the agreed amount that we had discussed before, as well as with the glass. She then told me that she would pay when her husband gets home to see if he's happy with it. So at this point, I was very confused as to why she couldn't just tell her husband to make the payment now. She then made me sit in her front sitting room while she walked around the home and showed her husband on FaceTime to make sure that he was happy with it. After she came downstairs, she told me that she'd have to double check and wait till he gets home to make sure he's happy and then he'll pay if so. So I have this neighbor who I've never spoken one word to at all. Uh, every time I drive by my car or when I had only a bicycle, I would ride by, and we would just wave towards each other. That's it. That was our whole communication. And today, I decided to go get some coffee from the gas station and everything. And I drive by, and I see his garage doors open. We wave at each other. And I go get my cup of coffee. And then I also get him a cup of coffee so I can finally meet this guy who I've just been waving to for the past, like, year and a half. I pull into his driveway, and this older gentleman, this old man, got up, smile on his face, and I gave him a cup of coffee, and his daughter walks out, and she tells me that he actually has autism, and his favorite part of the day is when I go to work or I come home from work and we wave at each other. That is his favorite part of the day. That hit me right in the heart. That made me feel so good. So just by a simple act of waving, I made somebody's day. This is part two of why I dropped out of high school my first day of freshman year. So like I said, I just shit myself in class. The teacher says we have to go around the room and everyone has to stand up and say something about themselves. And of course, I had to be sitting in the front of the classroom and I had to go first. So I just told her I didn't feel comfortable standing up and I'd rather sit down. But she said that I had to stand up and everybody has to stand up. So I clearly did not have many options and I decided that I was gonna stand up. And so I stood up and everybody gasped, even the teacher. The teacher literally made everybody get out of the classroom. And I knew from there on out, I could not show my face in that school anymore. I knew all day everyone was going to talk about that one kid that shit themselves in class. Yeah, the teacher took everyone out of the class and then I got myself cleaned up. Went to the office, told them what happened. They called my mom. They let me go home. I cried to my mom and told her I could not show my face at that school anymore. And so she pulled me out of high school and I just did online until I graduated.